um, let's, uh, my talk will be uh, based on these uh, pearls, I would say. Uh, so the first one uh, will be introduction, then the clinical presentation, clinical science, investigations and i'll be talking uh, one slide on metabolic myopathies uh, because they also cause a lot of genetic uh, uh, changes in the genome and mitochondrial myopathies and then move on to the management and the supportive care and then a little bit about recent advances in management then about the prognosis and of course future directions for sri lanka Okay, uh, genetic myopathies are inherited disorders. Uh, they are primarily affecting the skeletal muscle and also later they may affect the cardiac or the uh, smooth muscle as well. And they are caused by mutation in different genes and gene encoding proteins. They play a main role in muscle structure and the function. And they can be uh, distinctly categorized for no as non-dystrophic myopathies and dystrophic myopathies, such as Duchenne muscular dystrophy, limb girdle muscular dystrophy, which are the common things that we see. So out of the all myopathies, uh, there are congenital myopathies, the muscular dystrophies, then the myotonia and the channelopathies, and the, prim <coughs> the primary metabolic myopathies and the mitochondrial myopathies. So these are the common types that we see in day-to-day -day lives. Even though I say common, these are, a, uh, these are not a very common entity as we see in the clinical practice, a rare entity, but still we need to know uh, about this as uh, to manage these patients effectively. So how do they present? Uh, so the presenting symptoms and signs are specific to age at presentation. So, and some of the sexes may, may predominate in certain conditions like in Duchenne muscular dystrophy, it's mainly the male sex that predominates. And they can present at birth, in infancy, in childhood, adolescent, and or as an adult. So at birth, if you talk about presenting at birth, they may present as a floppy baby. And a lot of differential diagnosis there. And then we have to tease out which one of this is genetic myopathy. And then in infancy, they may present with a delay in achieving motor milestones. And in childhood, uh, maybe with recurrent falls and then inability to achieve a certain milestone like climbing upstairs. And in the adolescent, they may not be able to do exercise as a normal adolescent, like uh, they may have exercise intolerance. And as an adult, they may be uh, having uh, being bound to wheelchair and difficulty in uh, motoring. So the common presentation, clinical presentation to all these uh, entities would be hypotonia and progressive or non-progressive symmetrical muscle weakness. So when you go to the history, if you take from the antenatal side, because we see neonates affecting with this, antenatally, if you uh, go into the history, they may have a history of polyhydramnios. And also the mothers may remember if, if it occurs in a childhood, maybe reduced fetal movements compared to any other baby that she bear. And uh, in the neonatal period, there could be hypotonia, which is detected in the neonatal examination as well as subsequent examination. And also uh, she, the patient may present to us with a delay in attaining milestones. And then later as recurrent falls, uh, then, then some of these patients, especially with the metabolic myopathies and the mitochondrial myopathies, they may present with cramps following exercise. And some children may have contracts, or children or people may have contractures of joints. Also, the other systems that are affected are the respiratory system with respiratory insufficiency. They may complain of tiredness or chest pain. And as in myotonic dystrophy, they may have cataracts. So this, uh, sometimes they may just come with cataracts. And then subsequently, in the examination, you may find that this child is a myotonic or patient is a myotonic dystrophic uh, patient. And also rarely uh, with severe exercise, excessive uh, exertion, they may have dark urine, which may be myoglobinuria due to this uh, disruption of the muscle fibers. So I want to highlight here that family history is an important aspect because we are dealing with genetics. And consanguinity is an important thing that we need to get because a lot of these myopathies can uh, manifest as autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, X-linked uh, recessive manners. 
So if I uh, just show you this pedigree, this is a pedigree up to uh, three generations. So it is beneficial if you get a pedigree uh, up to at least three generations. If you get, could get more, that will be more beneficial, but at least up to three generations. So if you can see uh, here, uh, this is a carrier. A female is a carrier and the males are affected. And these two males have died in the second generation. And third generation, we are seeing this um, child who is affected, it's a male. And this is a, uh, this mark is for a miscarriage. So obviously you can see that the males are patients and the females have it. So it's a X-linked recessive inheritance. This is commonly seen in Duchenne muscular dystrophy as well as Becker muscular dystrophy. Uh, when you come to the next thing, now if you can see there are five uh, generations here and here of course you can see all males and females are affected equally. So obviously this is an autosomal dominant uh, pedigree. So there are many um, muscle disorders or myopathies like myotonic dystrophy which may uh, transmit in this manner. So then uh, moving on to the clinical signs, in examination, you could start with the face. Now you can see these children or patients who have sort of droopy eyelids and their faces are elongated and they, are, they have wasted facial muscles as compared to normal babies or children. And of course the V-shaped mouth or tented mouth, which is common in myopathies. And then uh, when you uh, examine further, the distribution of muscle weakness, you know that limb girdle muscular dystrophy is by far the commonest that we see. Uh, and you can see that the shoulder girdle and the hip girdle muscles are affected in this condition. And then in myotonic dystrophy, uh, you have more of distally affected uh, and also uh, you can see the neck muscles, the trapezium, sternocleidomastoid, and also the facial muscles. And of course, the lower limb, lower musculature is affected in myotonic dystrophy. And when it comes to the Duchenne muscular dystrophy, we know that mostly it's the pelvic girdle that is affected first, but not only that, they may go into the upper limbs and subsequently have difficulties in handwriting and difficulties uh, as is a progressive difficulty. So if you look at the muscle weakness, the distribution of muscle weakness, you can easily map where you are aiming at. And uh, just an examination finding that you could do in, uh, if you're suspecting myotonic dystrophy. Now, if you see this uh, picture, you can see this patient has a frontal boldness, and then he may have cataracts, and you can see that the facial muscles are kind of uh, atrophied, and then the sternocleidomastoid muscle, which is very prominent, but uh, in the sense like it's wasted, and then they may have gynecomastia. Uh, and then I will show you the other two signs where uh, hand shaking and the tapping by the tendon, tamer, tendon hammer, how it will affect this patient. And that, okay, let go. Doesn't do anything, right? Did you get the handshake on, Phil? Uh, I got right in the middle of it. Okay, so let's start the hand. So, because uh, this is this point, and yeah, then I'll do this, and then I'll explain later. You, can you see what I'm doing? Yes. Yeah, tape, tape. Are you relaxed? Yeah. You can see that it is contracted. It? It's difficult to get back to the normal position. Okay. And then one more thing, we're going to do the squeeze my fingers real, real tight. Real, 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 real tight. Tight, 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 tight. And then I'm going to ask you to let go real fast. Mm. You got that? Yes, yes okay. I got it. Okay. Yes, so there's a difficulty in reducing it. So these are important that you can elicit the Does that clinic hurt? to ascertain hurt. whether you are okay. dealing with a patient Stiff. with myotonic dystrophy. And a special big word about pediatrics. We may not see all these features in pediatrics, especially when they are around six uh, or 10 years, maybe around 10 years old. You may see these um, uh, symptoms, uh, maybe mildly, but at the same time, you can examine the mother or the father who's accompanying him and will have all these features. So, because it's an autosomal dominant condition. So don't, don't forget to examine the mother or the father who's there with the patient, especially in the pediatric patients. Okay, uh, this is more or less uh, a pediatric uh, condition. 
uh, where the baby the children may have delaying milestones or else if they have achieved they may there may be uh, sort of regression or motor regression by uh, recurrent falls and uh, maybe difficulty in climbing upstairs and difficulty in standing up from a squatting position if you can see uh, the calf muscles you can see that they are quite uh, hypertrophied compared to a normal child. So this is due to hypertrophy of the calves, which, which may be seen in Duchenne muscular dystrophy and also in Becker muscular dystrophy, but Becker muscular dystrophy is slightly different because it comes, uh, comes on a later age and it's less severe than the Duchenne muscular dystrophy. So when Duchenne muscular dystrophy is present around three to four years of age, but uh, whereas in Becker muscular dystrophy, we may be seeing them at an, uh, in the late first decade, like about nine, 10 years. So this is a sign that we elicit in these patients. See that this child has very difficulty standing up. So this is a Gower sign. So the Gower sign is positive, not only in Duchenne muscular dystrophy, but in proximal myopathy. But this is a classic sign we examine uh, in these patients, and it will be positive in them. So not only the muscle system, but there are other affected systems, especially in the muscular genetic myopathies, that is the cardiovascular system. Uh, they may have cardiomyopathies or conduction defects, and they may go into heart failure. So it is important that you uh, exclude any uh, cardiac condition or do, uh, do uh, you know, regular echoes to find out this, because there are medicines that you can provide them with to improve their outcomes. And also in, with respiration, especially with the weak diaphragm, they may have respiratory difficulties uh, and they may have respiratory failure later. Actually, these two are the main causes of death later in life in these patients. And also, uh, if you look at the musculoskeletal system, there may be loss of muscle mass, and then there may be fibrosis, and then ultimately they may need a wheelchair to go up. So what are the investigations? Like investigations like really uh, tailored for this condition, uh, the creatine kinase. In most of the myopathies and uh, congenital myopathies and metabolic myopathies, either the CK or creatine kinase is normal or minimally raised. But when you talk about the dystrophinopathies or Duchenne muscular dystrophy, the, uh, the Becker muscular dystrophy, the CK is elevated in thousands thousands in very early stages but as the muscle fibers are replaced with fat uh, there is uh, the ck level comes down and even uh, and when the child is wheelchair bound even they may come up to the normal level so that is something that we have to remember uh, that once the once they are in the advanced stage you may not see a ck that is very much high as compared to in the early stages so even it may be normal or mildly elevated in later stages and then the ultrasonography may show that uh, there's increased echogenicity if you uh, do ultrasonography by an experienced person. And then the EMG will show uh, myopathic pattern in specific, in, I mean, I'm talking in general, myopathic pattern. But there are specific things which show characteristic features. I will uh, show you one of them. And then the muscle MRI, uh, which has uh, sort of uh, evolved the diagnosis uh, recently, maybe about the, within the last 10 to 15 years, uh, there is muscle MRI and there are experts who um, report on these muscle MRIs where uh, according to the pattern, they could uh, decide on whichever the myopathy we are dealing with. And the histopathological diagnosis and the genetic analysis, which is the, I think the, uh, the important hallmark where we uh, diagnose these myopathies accurately and also be able to counsel the families uh, with the uh, diagnosis. Just showing you a EMG record of uh, myotonic dystrophy. Hope you can hear and see the sounds. So when you talk about the muscle pathology, uh, 
there are normal fibers and there are atrophic fibers and there are uh, you know split fibers then there are different types of fibers that the pathologist would talk about and uh, when it comes to the biopsies they need special staining and sometimes electron mic micrographic um, support to uh, de de detect this staining so um, there are certain congenital marker these actually maybe all almost all the tests may be negative except the uh, histology and the genetics so uh, this is a picture of the central co-myopathy, where you can see a co in the, in the cell, it's in the center. And also the nemelin rod, you can see the rods there in the muscles. And then congenital fiber type disproportion, again a condition that we may see in pediatric age group, where the children have uh, difficulty in attaining the developmental milestones. And once uh, you do the muscle biopsy, we may come out with uh, this condition. So obviously the Duchenne muscular dystrophy will show uh, absence of dystrophin in the muscle, which I haven't shown you in the picture, but that is kind of a diagnostic test. But nowadays uh, these things are replaced by genetics, genetic tests. So here actually you don't have to remember everything. I know there are so many mutations that they have found and still it's evolving. So tomorrow we may find another few, but congenital uh, myopathies with the uh, you know, different uh, protein aggregates or with cores or, you know, the rods, they, they have different types of uh, mutations that they have identified. So RY, uh, R1 is a uh, common and a very popular uh, genetic uh, defect that they have found and ACTA1 mutation. So all these are uh, with uh, these congenital myopathies. And of course, the Duchenne muscular dystrophy, we know is the uh, short arm of the uh, 21 uh, gene. So they have found different uh, gene sets where they have uh, affected different people have different sets of genes that are affected and also the therapy is directed against this uh, genetic uh, gene mutation. So obviously this is very important to know which gene is mutated because we will be directing our therapy against that. And uh, myotonic dystrophy, of course, there is a repetitive uh, repeats, uh, the CTG repeats, uh, and then uh, you see a autosomal dominant pattern here. Right. So a word about metabolic myopathies. Um, uh, there are primary metabolic myopathies with a lot of metabolic things in uh, place with uh, identified genetics as well especially the glycogen and the fructose, and there are glycogen storage disorders, the types, different types, the McArdle, the Tauri, and uh, things like that, and the CERN. So they all have different precipitating factors. Like if they go in for exercise, that is the exercise intolerance that they may be presenting with, with cramps and myoglobinuria and etc. So with that, if you investigate further, you will come on to uh, this line. Um, with the uh, different uh, uh, glycogen and as well as long chain fatty acids uh, and uh, so on. So this is a very complex thing. I don't have to, you have to know, remember everything, but as you see a patient, if you know that there are pathway to uh, diagnose these patients and also give a, a clear cut genetic counseling for these patients, I think that should be enough. Uh, then coming on to mitochondrial myopathies. This is uh, a myopathy that is mainly uh, inherited from the maternal side. This is the maternal origin. So if you go into the history, you may find that the mother has had some difficulties, either exercise intolerance or some psychiatric problems and or some neurological concerns, seizures or something, uh, something of that sort. I mean, it's not only neurology. We have a lot of other systems that are affected including the cardiac system with conduction difficulties and then the gastrointestinal system with uh, recurrent vomiting and um, then uh, there are eyes eye changes with blurring of vision and uh, redness and then uh, the other systems in general like uh, they may have shortness of breath then they have mouth sores 
sometimes with fever. So there are a lot of non-specific symptoms that they may present with along with some of these specified things so that you need to uh, sort of uh, suspect this and get into the uh, investigation pathway. And there are certain uh, disorders that we deal with like MRF and MELAS. Uh, those are the mitochondrial th common things that we uh, know. Uh, so this is a picture of a uh, muscle biopsy with ragged red fibers uh, that I've shown here. So the molecular genetics also play a role where mitochondrial genetics are done. And then of course, this is helped by the serum lactates and CK levels and liver function tests and all that initially and to come into this level of diagnosis. Okay, moving on to the management. It's mostly supportive, I would say, because most of the therapies that have been identified, although they have shown some uh, results that are promising, but not entirely have been successful. So it's mainly a multidisciplinary approach with physiotherapy, occupational therapy, and speech and language therapy. And of course, you need regular cardiac assessments as the heart can be involved in most of these myopathies and the regular assessment of lung functions. And also there are uh, ways and means where you can improve the oxygenation by using non-invasive ventilation like BiPAP at night. Uh, so uh, these things have improved the life expectancy of these patients who are affected with these myopathies. And then the orthotics and assisted mobility devices like uh, wheelchairs or maybe walkers and especially with myotonic dystrophy, they may have cataracts, so IKI is very important. And uh, of course, uh, you need social and psychological support for these patients because we know they live, but their, um, their quality of life may be impaired due to these uh, problems that they are facing. And of course, a good genetic counseling once we, uh, cons uh, once we uh, know what exactly is the genetic mutation, uh, so that we could counsel the families and uh, not forgetting the bereavement support for their families once the patient is dead uh, to uh, counsel them in that aspect. And we have to deal with caution in anesthesia, especially with malignant hypothermia. So we have to inform the anesthetist if uh, this patient is going in for some procedure or a surgery. And of course, the cardiomyopathy, which I discussed with you earlier. So there are medicines that you can improve the cardiac output and the restrictive lung disease uh, that they may have. And of course, renal impairment due to myoglobinuria with heavy exercise. So you may have to advise accordingly. So these are some of the pictures that uh, these patients uh, can have like as supportive devices uh, with walking support. And then, of course, the latest one would be the robotic assisted devices with a walking trainer and arm exercises that will improve their quality of life uh, remarkably. So when it comes to recent advances in management, I have just one slide. In um, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, genetic therapy has been tried. Uh, as I told you, the gene um, mutations have been identified and to certain uh, mutations, they have uh, sort of tried different medications. And uh, those different medications, I think in small studies, they have found some benefits, but not like a overall benefit to uh, uh, extrapolate it to all the other patients. So, uh, and then, uh, so that is about the genetics. And then of course your reducing, downstreaming the pathophysiological mechanisms like the anti-inflammatory mechanisms have tried with supportive therapy, like in Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Uh, in the early stages, we uh, try cortical steroids uh, to keep, their, keep them ambulant for a period of time and certain other medications that have been tried. So, so it's promising, but still uh, the answer is not quite clear. So what about the prognosis? So we know that in Duchenne muscular dystrophy, uh, about 20 years back, the life expectancy was around maybe earlier in the second decade, they may have probably passed away due to this cardiac and respiratory complications. But now it's up to about 25 years or even more with the recent advancements in the supportive therapy, especially with the respiratory support. Um, and in martinic dystrophy 
the common type 1 has a lower life expectancy due to complications, again due to cardiac conduction and then the respiratory problems. But in type 2, they have a normal life expectancy, but uh, and also most of the congenital myopathic patients have a normal lifespan. Although uh, all these patients uh, need supportive devices and regular medical and surgical care for their disability. So obviously the life uh, quality of life may be impaired due to this disability. Okay, so I just thought the Pearl 10 uh, as future directions for Sri Lanka. So I think we should provide opportunities for patients to expose to research medicines at molecular level. At least some of the studies are happening, so but not all of them reach that uh, level. And of course, identifying the genetic basis or genetics gen genes responsible and counseling on future pregnancies would be useful in this situation if they are unable to provide any treatment at least and improve the supportive care to uplift the quality of life. Obviously, they are going to live, so we want to improve the quality of life and the dissemination of knowledge on these conditions, especially to the medical and the affected family and providing information to actually where to find this optimal care and when to where to uh, refer them kind of thing. And also the state of art regional center regional centers, one or two national centers even, for diagnosis and treatment so that we know where to refer to when, when we need, uh, when we encounter this sort of patient who are difficult to diagnose and also to develop patient support groups for psychological and the social support like in other countries. Okay, so I have come to the end of my talk. So in summary, so genetic myopathies are a rare group of conditions predominantly affecting the skeletal muscles and patients present at different ages in their lives. So I have discussed different age groups, how they present. And the muscles as well as other systems may be affected like the cardiac and the respiratory. And availability of genetic studies have widened the diagnosis, so opened the door to the horizon. And rare metabolic myopathies present as exercise induced leg pain so we shouldn't just uh, leave it alone. And uh, mitochondrial genetics are inherited from the mother maternal side. So therefore the history uh, should be including the maternal side uh, complications or problems that they had. And the management, as we know, is mostly supportive. And recent advances have targeted gene therapy and also have shown some promising results, but uh, it's not really 100%. Mortality rates vary in different conditions. However, significant mor morbidity exists and regional state-of-the-art centers uh, and dissemination of knowledge on these conditions will improve the outcomes for Sri Lanka.